Hello, yes, our enemies are laughing at us. Well, not yours truly, we know what they're laughing at. But they truly are laughing at us. The latest pantomime and circus, and there's many of them, I'll get to the others in a minute, is Paul Golding's Britain First. Once again, true to form, true to form, he's involved in some form of activity that involves violence, confrontation, dangerous people with dangerous ideas, the latest nonsense is training the faithful, a security team, uh, knife, knife defence techniques, how to defend against knife attacks if they're ever attacked on the high streets or wherever, and again it conjures up in the public's mind, Christ, who's this lot, who's going to attack them with knives and it just demonises the movement, the anti-Islamic movement, anti-immigrant, migrant movement, and that's what it's intended to do. But more, I reckon more so, the reason for this is the state needs, and even Nick Griffin's acknowledged this, the state needs white bogeymen as well as Muslim bogeymen. You see, the state's planned ahead, years ahead. It knew the jihadi attacks were coming, and it knew it wouldn't be able to stop them all. So... It's created its own white bogeymen in the form of Britain first to scare the public so they can say to the public, look, you know, it's not just the Muslims, they've got the white extremists. And also, it enables the government at some time to bring in new laws, whether not their public order, hate speech, hate speech laws or both or more. I don't know, we shall see, as Nick Griffin used to say. He may still say that. So, they needed white bogeymen and they've created it in the form of Britain first, as well as national action, and even the EDL, I suppose. Right, let's see uh, what happens with the uh, Football Lads Alliance. Let's see where that goes. But anyway, anyway, so the latest nonsense, and it is nonsense, is Paul Golding in the Metro uh, newspapers, is it a London one or a national one? You get on the bus when you're on the bus, that's right, you can read that on the bus. Is it a London-based paper? Well, whatever, anyway. Uh, it's these self-defence... Uh, techniques, right, a secret one, secret moves to defend against knife attacks. Let me tell you something now. I've been in the real world of violence all my life, right? I've worked the doors for 27 years. And let me tell you something now. If someone's got a knife, it's highly likely you're getting stabbed. There's no techniques to defend against a knife attack. No block, no secret move. It's a load of nonsense. You've got two ways of defending against a knife attack. That's running away if you've got the opportunity. Or if you're in an environment, a bar or cafe or wherever, to pick a stool up or a table and use it, you know, as uh, like a shield or to fend off the, the knife attack or, you know, whatever. Or to pick something up and throw them at them. But if you don't have the opportunity of that, then you're getting stabbed, right? Especially if it's a formidable opponent, that's a big guy, and you're not. You, you're getting stabbed. Only very, very, very tiny amounts of people may be able to defend against such attacks. And again, it depends who's attacking them, how big they are, how strong they are. There's a multitude of factors that have come into play. But anyway, that's another video on itself. Oh, and while I'm at it as well, I'll say this. Women's self-defense is a con on the internet, so don't you women be wasting your time thinking you're going to start these new self-defense courses and you're going to knock men out or get them in some chokehold or what, it, it's not happening, it's fantasy world, but anyway, that's another video on it, so. So the latest pantomime and circus is Paul Golding, and like I've said, the reason for all this, the antics of Britain first, their continual uh, violence, confrontation, arrest, and now where uh, knife uh, defence techniques, in case they get attacked on the street by uh, crazed Muslims carrying knives. I mean, the whole lot of it's so sinister. It's so dangerous even reading it. Well, that's the idea of it. It's to create white bogeymen. As I've said, even Nick Griffin's acknowledged that. That that's the case, that they need uh, white bogeymen as well. But he's silent on it. He doesn't say anything about it. You don't believe Paul Golding's genuine. And his Britain first. They're continual confrontation with the law, Muslim, is all just a coincidence and actually comes to the territory. You know quite well what he's up to. Like you do many others and you're silent on it. Tommy Robinson, okay, you've expressed an opinion, but it's dead now. Your opinion's dead on it. You don't say no more. Football lads alliance, you know that's going nowhere. Again, it's 
march them up and down the high street, march them into Witherspoons, on the train and home, job done. Control the anger, like I've said. The latest one, there's another one, Pantomime Circus, is the Identitarians of the Starship Enterprise, of the uh, Italian branch of the uh, Identitarians now purchased a ship or something. Um, I think it was in the sun, was it? Uh, they've crowdfunded 60, 62,000 pounds in a month. Amazing, isn't it? Where all this money's coming. But anyway, Nick Griffin knows all that's a load of rubbish as well. See, it's a logistic, a logistic impossibility policing the Mediterranean and the Libyan coast. It, it just can't be done. Instead of using that money to build um, a formidable political party or buy a HQ a headquarters to operate from, uh, that you're not going to get kicked out of, to fight the traitors internally, because that's what we have to do. We can't win this on the uh, high seas of the Mediterranean. It just can't be done. Nick Griffin knows that. Yet he's silent, and this is very sad, isn't it? But what's happened with Nick Griffin is he's balls up with the BMP big time. And instead of admitting that he has, rolls his sleeves up and gets back in there, he's reinvented himself now as this nationalist prophet, visionary, with the war of the cradle and nationalist cadres and utter, utter nonsense again. You see, when the Reconquista occurred in the 13th century they didn't the white people back then weren't dumbed down they didn't have mtv or reality tv or all of the fashion industry music industry tv industry controlling and manipulating the masses the parallel is a billion miles away once we're conquered no one's undoing or reconquering should i say it's not happening once the conquest happens there's no reconquest it's not happening it's fantasy world we need to get back in our respective countries and build formidable political parties to fight the traitors that's what we've got to do not sail on the high seas of the mediterranean around the libyan coast or paul golding's knife uh, knife uh, defense uh, moves and techniques and whatever it's just utter nonsense utter utter nonsense but our enemies are laughing at us they literally are they must see they're pulling off the same uh, stunt year in year out and we're still falling for it well when i say that i'm not we know we know the ones that, <laughs> that are falling for it but they're still falling for it you know and uh, nick griffin you know you know it's all a load of bollocks of course you do identitarians who could take that serious? You know, but you put yourself now in the lunatic fringe, probably the only home in the nationalist community that will probably accept you now because you ballsed up. But you should be a man and just admit this. Get back in there, roll your sleeves up and we'll have another go. But you've opted for the nonsense, the lunatic fringe, and you put yourself now in a corner, haven't you, you know? Anyway, our enemies are indeed laughing at us. Well, not me anyway. Okay, thank you.